Okay, hi, this is Tony Mormino with uh, Insight Partners and want to thank you all for following us online and thank you all for the engagement and hello, Lucra and John Deere. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to do a quick something new here. We're going to um, actually record our podcast live. So typically I report these. All right, thank you all for joining us. Appreciate you. And uh, feel free to comment. I'm going to talk about heat pumps. We did a post the other day on the six uh, most common types of heat pumps, at least the ones that I deal with um, or have dealt with on a day-to-day -day basis. Hello, Heidi. Hi, Mickey White. Thank you for joining us. Checking the feed on LinkedIn tier two. So I'm going to talk about six different types of heat pumps. Would love to get your feedback on whether or not you have used these and what your experience experience has been on them. So heat pumps are, are gaining in popularity um, due to the current electrification and decarbonization movement. And hey, Eric. Hey, Thomas. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're actually streaming this live on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and on Hello Rad on um, on Facebook as well. So thank you all for joining us. So heat pumps are gaining in popularity due to the new electrification and dehumidification movements. If you're not familiar with those, basically there's a a worldwide movement to reduce the use of carbon burning carbon. Hey Oscar, welcome. Um, reduce the use of burning carbon like through natural gas and things like that, which we use a lot for heating water and heating air in the HVAC community. And we are not here to say um, to promote or unpromote these policies, but we do as HVAC representatives have to um, have to respond to them. Hey, Jack, thanks for joining us. Uh, so that's what we do. So, hey, Flip, thank you, Philip. Thanks for joining us. Um, Thank you very much for following us. And so, so we we get a lot of questions on heat pumps lately because of the electrification and dehumidification, uh, decarbonization movement. So I want to talk about a couple different types of heat pumps that we're um, familiar with. And heat pumps, you know, they're not a new technology by any stretch of the imagination. I actually looked this up on Google. Uh, the first heat pump was invented in 1856, which was kind of a shock to me, and it was used to dry salts in the Austrian salt marshes. Um, I guess they take the salt water and, and make salt out of it. So they've been around a while. Um, I had the guy's name here, but I don't see it. Anyway, so as HVAC professionals, I think it's kind of important that we stay up to date on the latest technology. So I'm going to go over six different types of heat pumps that I'm pretty familiar with. Hey, Sam. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for joining us. And um, any comments, questions, let me know. If I can answer them, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, if not, I'll try and get back to you. You can send me a message. So the, the most common types of heat pumps we see in our industry are what we call air source ducted heat pumps. And, and just in general, like if you're not familiar with heat pumps, what a heat pump does is through a refrigeration cycle, it takes heat from one source, an air water source, and it transfers that to another source. And the most common way to explain that is like your home unit. OK, so if you've got a split system in your house, which means you have an indoor air handling unit, when you have an outdoor condensing unit, the condensing unit is the thing outside that makes a bunch of noise and puts a lot of heat into the air um, during the cooling mode. So what happens is in the summer, you are producing cold air in the indoor air handler. Um, in the winter, when you need a heat pump through a re what's called a reversing valve, the refrigerant cycle reverses. So what you're doing in the winter is your outdoor unit, your condensing unit becomes your evaporator. So you're actually cooling down the air, even if it's like 30 degrees, you're cooling that down, you're taking that heat and you're moving it indoors into your, uh, what was your evaporator coil, which is now your condenser coil indoors. So that's the general function of a heat pump. It's the same, no matter if it's air to air, water to air, water to water, it's all the same principle. You're extracting BTUs from one source and bringing it into another. So thank you, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, Okay, so the, the couple different types. So there's an air source heat pump, ducted heat pump, which is the one we just explained, right? It's the most common one. It takes heat from the outdoor and puts it into the indoors through like a split system, um, split system air handling unit used in residential applications, light commercial, commercial applications, et cetera. The other type, um, we had a question here. I hear that heat pumps are also a game changer in the automotive industry. Really enjoying the insight, Tony. Appreciate you sharing your. Thank you very much. 
Uh, I appreciate the opportunity and thanks for listening. I'm always shocked when people get on here and want to listen to us. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, yeah, so I don't know about in the automotive industry. I know that one of the things I know is when you have an electric car, the electric strip heat uses a lot of electricity, which which can drain the batteries. And, and just in general knowledge, um, heat pumps are generally two to three times more efficient than electric strip heat. So electric strip heat might have a COP of one, a heat pump may have a COP of two or three. So yeah, to implement, I, it's funny, I, Chris Adams, our VP of engineering has a really nice new Tesla. And uh, I asked him, you know, have they ever considered putting heat pumps in there due to the efficiency? And and we we were just talking about that. We don't know the answer to it, but. Um, yeah, so, okay, I was just checking the comments here. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, for joining us. Um, so good question. If you have any other questions, please put those through. So the next heat pump I was gonna talk about is what's called a water source heat pumps. So water source heat pump, it, same principle as the air source heat pump, Instead of extracting BTUs from the outdoor ambient air, it extracts BTUs from a water source. For example, you might have a pond or you might have a, um, a lake, which is a bear pond, right? Or a cooling tower, which has a, a water loop, which is rejecting heat to the atmosphere. So that's a water source heat pump. Um, let's see, Thomas commented here, heat pumps and automotive are being used nearly all over. Oh, okay, didn't know that. Least have at least one vehicle, if not several vehicles now installed with heat pumps. Thank you, Thomas. I, I wasn't aware of that. That's a great uh, a great take on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so water source heat pumps, let's say you'd have a cooling tower somewhere and it might be feeding a little um, water source heat pump, you know, three to five ton in each. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us in each. Uh, hey, Andy, thank you. Um, in each classroom, let's say if you had a school, right? So you have this water loop and you're you're cooling the water loop and you're taking the BTUs from there and you're putting it into your, um, into your classroom through the refrigeration cycle. Okay. That's a water source heat pump, a little less common than the air source, but, but pretty common nonetheless. Okay. Then you have heat pump chillers, you know, and to go along with the whole decarbonization movement, um, getting rid of gas boilers is, is on some people's list, a priority. Okay. So one way you could do that is through, uh, what's called a heat pump chiller. Now there's, Heat pump chillers and heat pump water heaters. I look at those as two separate products. That's just me because I've been around a while. So to me, a heat pump chiller, um, this is a water with water product. You're taking BTUs out of a water loop and you're using the refrigeration cycle to put the BTUs into a different water loop. I think of like a centrifugal chiller that's modified to be a heat pump. That's a heat pump chiller to me. In my mind, when you say heat pump chiller, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, you have dedicated heat pump um, I'm testing hot water heater heat pump. Oh, good. Yeah, let me know how that works out. I want to get one for my home too. So um, heat pump water heaters, are, are they're built to extract um, the BTUs from the ambient air and put that into the water, okay? Like those are very common in residential applications and getting more common, becoming more common in commercial applications, okay? So it looks like a heat pump chiller, a heat pump water heater, excuse me, looks to me like an air-cooled chiller, okay, right? So if you've seen an air-cooled chiller, it's got this big condenser coil, it's big, big condenser fans, and a chiller barrel at the bottom. Heat pump chillers look, heat pump water heaters look very similar to that. They could be either outdoors or they could be indoors. Um, Kimball, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Again, if y'all have any questions or want to comment or at least get a shout out live on whatever platform you're watching on, please uh, comment. I'm glad to do that for you. This is a lot of fun, by the way. Thank you all. For those that are taking the time to join us um okay so heat pump chillers heat pump water heaters you know you have these products which are made to be installed indoors so you may have like a basement area which you can cool with the heat pump water heater extract the btus from the basement area whatever the area is and then use that that heat to heat your water so you can eliminate your boilers and typically those go along with like a bank of storage um uh, hot water storage tanks, okay? And you could do that pretty easily, especially if it's a domestic type uh, situation because the hot water use on the, the profile for hot water use on domestic applications is, you know, it peaks hard in the morning for a couple hours then hard in the evening and then it doesn't really use much hot water the rest of the day. Okay, so we talked about air source heat pumps, water source heat pumps, heat pump chillers, and heat pump water heaters. Next, I'm going to talk about 
VRF heat pumps. So let's talk about, actually before that, let's talk about ductless split systems, okay? So ductless split systems are very similar to the first product we talked about, which are basically an air source heat pump, okay? Except they're not ducted, hence the name ductless split systems, right? So you may have a cassette hanging on your wall um, and a condensing unit outside. That's your air conditioner during the summer, and then it flips and reverses um, during uh, the heating times to give you a heat pump uh, heater for your air conditioning. Okay, so that's a ductless split system. Now, VRF products, in my mind, are, are different. They're not a one-to-one -one type system. They're usually one condensing unit to multiple air handlers, and they're they're not, um, you know, they're not uh, home run back to the unit. Okay, there's one refrigerant loop which takes the the three uh, pipes or two pipes depending on the manufacturer around. So VRF systems, you can classify those as heat recovery or heat pump. Okay, and this confuses a lot of confuses a lot of people because they're both VRF systems, right? So VRF variable refrigerant flow just means the refrigerant is varying the flow um, as it goes throughout the system. The heat pump version of that, let's say you had one condensing unit with 20 indoor units. All the units are heating, all the units are cooling, or you could have some that are off, et cetera. But you can't have simultaneous heating or cooling. So if you're doing a VRF system with a heat pump product, be careful and make sure you understand they can only be in heating or only be in cooling. Um, I'm not really a big fan of that type of ERF system because it doesn't really give you the true individual control you think you're getting when you get a VRF system, okay? So please be careful of that. I did a school once and it wasn't the most ideal um, situation. If you're doing one big open area, like an auditorium um, or let's say a cafeteria or something like that, and you can then you, you know you can switch it over at any time and not make people uncomfortable, that's the best place for that application, in my in my opinion. And I'll uh, also thank you all for joining us. This is, this is a lot of fun. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so um, where was I? Okay, so VRF heat pump. Now, VRF heat recovery is a whole different story. This doesn't really go along with the heat pump discussion, but I just want to mention this. So VRF heat recovery is when you could actually simultaneous heat or, heating or cooling. So if you go back to the previous example of one connecting, condensing unit connected to 20 indoor units. You can have five of them heating, 15 of them cooling. You could have 10 heating, 10 cooling, et cetera. You could have any combination of cooling and heating you want. That's a VRF um, heat recovery system versus just the heat pump system. So again, if you're doing VRF, just heat pump, be cognizant that all the units are either heating, some of them can be off, or they're either cooling and some of them can be off, but you can't have simultaneous heating or cooling. Be careful of that because it gets you into trouble. Um, the next type and the last type I'm going to talk about is what's called a ground source heat pump, which is you still have a water loop, but instead of um, extracting BTUs from the from the air through the water loop or from like a pond or something like that, you have uh, you you actually have pipes that are going into the ground. So you have a a, a loop of, of antifreeze water. Uh, glycol and water, that's the word I was looking for, that goes into the ground, and the ground becomes your heat sink, okay? And then, you know, because the ground is a pretty common temperature all year round, so it's theoretically can, can make the system much more efficient. The, the drawback to a ground source heat pump system or a geothermal heat pump system is they're extremely expensive to install because you got to install these wells, okay, to pump the water down, it, the water pipes down into. In my opinion, um, I've never used this type of system. I'm not sure the payback would be there in most applications. And you can get into some scenarios where you're heating so much that you're overheating the ground. Um, and that's not good either when you're 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 using the heat or you're overcooling the ground or you're overheating the ground in summer is what I meant to say. And that could be a detriment if you're um, trying to use a ground source heat pump system. So um, anyway, so those are the six common types of systems that I see or I have seen. I've been in the industry for um, a few years now, since 1997, started with train air conditioning. And now I'm the, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm the marketing manager here at Insight Partners. We're an HVAC rep firm. You can see a lot of what I talked about here at our LinkedIn page, Insight Partners, um, or our website, insightusa.com. You can come check us out. 
And if you missed this, we were talking about heat pumps and how they're gaining in popularity. Um, you could also follow me on TikTok, Tony Mor at Tony Mormino. Um, again, check out our uh, also our YouTube channel, HVAC Insight Partners HVAC TV. You could check us out there. Hey, Brody, thanks for joining us. And uh, I really appreciate this. This is a lot of fun. It's kind of a new thing we're going to start doing. Uh, I'm actually recording this podcast um, live while I'm on TikTok. We're also on our on our YouTube channel, Insight Partners HVAC TV. And I'm on my live on my Facebook page, which I haven't done in a long time. So I'm curious to see how that's turning out. And uh, we're live on LinkedIn too. Uh, Tony Mormino on LinkedIn and Insight Partners on LinkedIn. So come and check us out. And again, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Jonathan. And anybody who commented, we really greatly appreciate it. And we'll end it now. And hopefully we'll do this again very soon. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate you.